the fact that I had a very strong technical background and then and then as as a as a child had grown up with these art and design influences and actually during my time at MIT decided halfway through okay I finished all my ME requirements now MIT allows me to take any class I want to what shall I do with my existing year in front of me? I, di I discovered the precursors to the Media Lab. It was the Visual Language Workshop and the Ar Architecture Machine Group. So by the time I graduated, I had had a whole year of deciding that actually what I wanted to do was to take my technical background and my visual background and become a media artist, work on things that would combine the visual and the technical. So when Danny asked me right after I graduated, I, I think it was really days after the actual graduation ceremony, asked me if I would come with him to Thinking Machines, work with him and with Richard Feynman and with all of you who I hadn't met yet, to realize this electronic brain, this new, entirely new form of computers, then I felt, well, I actually wanted to go off and make art, but you know, they're giving me tabula rasa, they're giving me carte blanche, they're saying it doesn't matter how much the packaging costs because the machine is so expensive anyway that it'll be uh, really inconsequential. It just has to be so amazing that when people say it, they say, this is a machine like no other I have ever seen before in my life. And what designer can turn down that? That's good inspiration for young designers, which is a good thing. Um, to be able to design this machine required a bunch of different constraints. To, um, there's the marketing constraints like no other. But we were trying to give form, function, you were trying to make it look good. It had to actually work. Um, that was his... Um, that was what, were, what were sort of the big problems. what were the things you had to juggle to be able to come up with something, and why do you think that it's beautiful enough to deserve being in the Museum of Modern Art? The things, the first thing that had to be decided was: is it possible to build this machine at all? And that was literally how Danny formulated it. He said, you know, we're a bunch of software designers, chip designers, electronics designers, but none of us have a feeling for the physicality of it. So we don't even know if it's possible to physically build this machine. That was my first task. So I, t I talked to all of the h hardware designers and found out, okay, well, the boards are going to be about two foot by two foot and they have all these connectors going off in different ways. And then there was the whole issue of the hypercube network, the 12 dimensional hypercube network, which I had to, I had to figure out and is a story unto itself. But those inputs I took and and figured out what does this mean in real life and it and we wanted to have the footprint as small as possible. So the very first iteration was a machine that was about ten feet tall and had boards two feet by two feet. And you know when I drew this up and said, well this is what you've told me, it's going to be like in terms of the dimensions. Everyone said, oh my god, we can't do that. <laughs> Went back and reduced the size of the boards, reduced the number of connections, etc. And then at, at some point I said, okay, with what we have now, it can actually go into any standard package that already exists. We can take an existing housing for any machine and put the boards in because we reduced it down so much so it'll fit. That's the point at uh, which the the fact that the company um, from, you know, Danny Hillis and Cheryl Handler, the president on, on down, really were willing to support the extra effort to make it look amazing came into play. Because that would be at the point at a normal computer company where you'd say, okay, package has to be as cheap as possible and easy to service as possible. It's just shove this into the racks and yes, we've got problems with the cabling and the connections, but you know, let's save as much money as possible and use as cheap a packaging as possible. So the fact that the company was 
completely behind having the machine look amazing and that also probably that that they could essentially bill it under marketing <laughs> as visual marketing that's what allowed the machine to become the um, amazing form that it had it was not a it, it was not a foregone conclusion that it would look that way then i have to say that we had an amazing team you know i had been in the packaging design area for two years at Hewlett Packard. That was actually the only industry experience I had, and the and um, I had never taken a, a, um, a machine of of this size through the whole cycle. So luckily, we were able to bring in Gordon Bruce and Al Hawthorne on the industrial design side, and Ted Billado, who can probably you know put it in an entire computer in the in, in in a grain of rice if he really has to and they were um, they were really the 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 team that that um, took what was more my sort of conceptual inputs and said okay then you know here's here's how and where the the fans have to go and uh, this is how we can do the grill work and and also we're willing, really willing to say, okay, the, the first doors on the machine, these translucent uh, doors that let the lights flicker through, um, Alan and Gordon finished those by hand. They were hand sanding them and spraying them with matte spray. I think in the production version it was done slightly differently, but, um, but uh, the machine was essentially really a, a handmade jewel box, if you will, with these really amazing people from the industrial design and mechanical engineering side to make it a reality. Part of that reality being that Danny said, I want it to be as tall as you. I'm five foot three. So the machine had to be five foot three. And the reason was that Danny didn't want to have a behemoth. It, 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 he wanted it to be, so to speak, a member of the family. It should be something that was human scale. And my height, five foot three, he said, you know, most generic white American males are a little bit taller. And so it'll seem like a friendly member of a family. It won't be some huge machine that's come to dominate and take over the world. It'll be, it'll be part of our family. So that's really... Uh, the uh, a very specific design criteria that we we were given that made uh, Ted's job taking care of the cooling much much harder. But um, as as he said, you know, um, we just need a little bit of time to work that problem, and he came up with the solution, and it was fine. As you were going through this, was there a oh my God, we screwed up moment? Was there an oh my god we screwed up moment on the machine? Not for me personally, because to be absolutely frank, there were two years of design investigation and prototyping, and the point when the design was really fixed in stone was the point when I said, I'm going to Munich to become an art student. And, and the, the reason for me personally taking, cutting out at that point was that uh, Dick Clayton said, okay, well, the design phase is over. Now, um, now we need to take it through production. And, and going into production, I was sitting there saying, you know, now from thinking about the global issues and how can this machine be an expression of... of culture and our fantasies of what a machine could be and the fantasies of the people who are here on the ground really working on the machine all of these uh, all of these very conceptual and social and cultural ideas then it boiled down to do we need six number four screws or can we use four number six screws and i realized that if i changed my profession from engineer to artist then I could stay in that, that conceptualization and prototyping phase for the rest of my life. And 
that's the point when I cut out. So frankly, it's quite possible in that last year before the machine was re released um, commercially, maybe there were some, oh my God, uh, moments, but I wasn't around to hear it or have to deal with it.